You started your programming journey years ago, but you still don't feel confident in your abilities. You can write code, but you get stuck very often, which leads up looking at Google constantly. You can't code anything complex and you depend on tutorials too much. You always feel like there is something missing to progress to the next level. Do you fail technical interviews very often and nobody is telling you what you are doing wrong? If this resonates with you in any way, then you are on the right channel. Hi, my name is Darko and welcome to my channel. I'm going to tell you about things that differentiate an average programmer from experienced ones. I'm going to talk about three things in this video and after watching this you're gonna look at programming from a different angle. So let's begin. This one was big for me because this is one of those things that nobody tells you about but you learn it with experience. I had to learn this the hard way and this is the approach I used to take. I would type some code in the editor without really understanding what it does and then I would compile it and look what would happen. And the thing I was looking for, if it did not occur, then I would go back to the editor and try something else until it did. And the result of this approach was that it took me so many hours to solve problems. If you were interviewed at Google or any other fan company, and if the interviewer noticed that you are typing code that you don't really understand what it does, then you would not pass an interview. For each line of code that you write, you must understand what each line does. The interviewer could see you type an array or a list in your code and he could ask you a question to name the difference between the two and when to apply each. You must know answer to these questions, otherwise you're gonna look incompetent. If you are learning to code and you are watching some tutorials online, do not just type the code after the instructor. Try to understand why he is typing something and why. If he is typing something like private, public, static, class, whatever. Go to Google and type what does static means in programming and where it's used and why. And when you do this, you're gonna not only learn about static classes or static methods, you're gonna learn about object-oriented programming and you're gonna realize that there are other types of programming like functional or procedural. And if you keep repeating doing something like this, you're gonna learn programming way better and your horizons will open up and you will just uh, understand things way better than if you just kept watching YouTube tutorials. And another example that I can give you, let's say that we are declaring a type of float or a double. Now go to Google and search when and why to use float over a double and vice versa. For example, because I come from a game developer background, uh, we always use float over a double because a double is more expensive on the CPU. Also, a double is a larger number than a float which means that it's more precise but very often in video games we don't need that much precision. So why am I telling you this? To write optimized games you need to understand how things work under the hood. DSA stands for data structures and algorithms. As a self-taught developer I was never introduced to DSA until years later. I always felt like I was missing something but I could not fathom exactly what. The most underrated advantage of universities or colleges is that they force students to learn DSA. If you are a self-taught developer like myself, there's a high chance that you're gonna jump over DSA. This is the essential thing that you have to know in programming. This is precisely the difference between a bad and a good programmer. Every software program is actually written by data structures and algorithms. Let's say you have some collection of numbers and words. This is something we call data and an algorithm is used to search, sort and store this data. So these two things that I named, they make a program. So when you run a program, what you are actually doing, you are running some some algorithm through some data. When you actually understand these things, you are way ahead of those programmers who don't study DSA. And trust me, so many developers do not study DSA. In order to level up as a developer, there are some must-know data structures that you must learn. And those are uh, lists, arrays, uh, linked lists, hash maps, graphs, trees, etc. On the algorithm side, you must know searching and sorting algorithms. When you write some algorithm in your code, you must understand its time and memory complexity. This is what we call big O and you can search more about it on Google. And when you really learn this stuff, you're gonna look at code differently. I use to believe this lie for many years but as I learned more and more I started heading away from this mindset because I was wrong. Can you learn programming without doing math? 
Yes, you do. But I'm sorry, but I have to tell you this. Otherwise, you're gonna learn it too late. M not knowing math makes you an average programmer. At some point in your career, you're gonna face this roadblock where you're not gonna be able to solve a problem without knowing math. It did happen to me and I'm talking from experience. I used to fail math at school and I was so proud of it. I was very confident that I will never need math in real life and I was so wrong. Nowadays, I use math daily and it's making me a way better programmer than I used to be just because I learned some elementary school math. And literally, you only need elementary school math in order to become a better programmer. Let's say you are building an app like Google Maps. How are you gonna know the distance between two objects or an angle between two objects or a direction, you're not gonna know this without understanding math. Actually, most programming languages have inbuilt math functions, but do you know how to use them? This is exactly why you need to learn math, is because it will improve your programming life drastically, and also you will get higher paid jobs just because knowing elementary school math. This is it for today, guys. See you in the next video, and if you want to keep watching content like this, please subscribe. See ya.